I have one more example uh, for material handling and analogic in this video. In a previous video, I demonstrated how you can implement a resource pool um, for modeling assembly workers assigned to a assembly station um, with a through running or with a, with a connected conveyor line. Um, in this video, I want to demonstrate how you can facilitate a batch assembly process using the process uh, modeling component uh, batch. Um, and this is what I'm going to do in, in this video. So again, we have a simple conveyor line here. You see here the space markup components for the simple roller conveyor. We have a workstation here. We have a, a node rectangle, a rectangular node. With a position on the conveyor, we have three attractors for the locations where assembly workers are going to conduct assembly work. We have a resource pool with three uh, resource, uh, resources available. So uh, three assembly workers are available in total. And they are assigned to uh, this rectangular node as a home location. And this is where they are going to fulfill the work since the workstation is connected, uh, as you can see here in the resource tab, to this uh, rectangular area. And the uh, uh, that con or it's, it's connected to the uh, to this resource pool. And this resource pool is connected to this area. We have uh, in this process a capacity of five. So this is a batch size of five. We have a processing time and the process begins when uh, the entire batch is uh, inside the station. Um, up until now, uh, if we have five uh, materials going in, in this case, uh, we have uh, boxes moving along the conveyor from, from here. Um, then once five boxes are inside this process station, then the process is initiated. And when it's finished, five, uh, five boxes leave the station. What we want to do now is we want to assemble those five uh, boxes into a bigger box. Um, and so we want only one big bigger box to leave the workstation in our model instead of five small boxes leaving the workstation. And for this, I use this batch component. So we have now a source that generates uh, custom box agents, which are material items, uh, a custom type of material items I created representing small boxes. Um, every 10 seconds, uh, a custom box is created, runs down the conveyor. The convey to station block here, which is a convey block from the block section, conveys small these small custom boxes from the beginning of, of this conveyor um, to the station, as you can see here. So once it conveyed them there, we are going inside the batch um, process and um, it has a defined batch size of five. Um, we can select a new agent type representing the, uh, the new agent created once the batch is created. Uh, and in this case, I created a custom agent type called the bigger box. And this is also specified down here on the batch type. And um, besides from this, I uh, took the uh, default settings and um, we're then um, creating a new, a new item which needs to enter the conveyor again. Since in this workstation, I clicked um, uh, that here. Exactly. That when the convey block is left, these uh, small boxes, uh, they are actually being uh, uh, removed from the space. So removing them from the space and not occupying any space on the conveyor. We're creating a new batch and this new batch needs to enter the conveyor again. So I'm using a conveyor enter block uh, taken from here from the block section. And I can specify either a conveyor or position on a conveyor 
for entering the conveyor and in this case it shows this position on the conveyor. So here's this new badge is entering which has the type bigger box, so it's a, a, a material item type, a custom material item type. Um, and then I'm conveying from the current position, which would be that position then, until at the end of this conveyor. And then the uh, bigger box is handled until the sink where it's destroyed. So let's see how this uh, works out. Gonna speed up. So we have three workers now here from the resource pool. You can see all three are in use or are located at the tractor. And now we have boxes coming in. Those are the custom custom boxes which are specific material type I created. Now we have five entering the workstation. The process now begins and will take 15 seconds because we're running at high speed and once the process has been completed, uh, this batch enters the uh, conveyor, which has an, a new material uh, item type, which is called bigger box, and which also has some different uh, geometric uh, feature. So that's uh, how you can implement the batch uh, process component uh, to facilitate, for example, a batch assembly process in this, uh, in this example. And in uh, follow-up videos we are going to look at some um, further aspects of the material handling library in AnyLogic.